Hey guys, welcome back to Click Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this exponential equation. And make sure to stick us the end of the problem, where I have three bonus problems that are similar to this one, which you guys can try to solve. Alright, so I have x to the power of x to the power of 2 is equal to 16. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the power of 2 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of x to the power of 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 16 to the power of 2. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. And m times n, these two are interchangeable, meaning I can also rewrite this as a to the power of n times n. And if we can rewrite a to the power of m times n as a to the power of m to the power of n, this means that we can rewrite a to the power of n times m as a to the power of n to the power of m. So in other words, a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. So in this case, we can think of x to the power of 2 as m and 2 as n. So I'm going to switch these two places. So now I have x to the power of 2 to the power of x to the power of 2 is equal to 16 to the power of 2. Now I'm going to let x to the power of 2 equal to the variable y. So now I have y to the power of y is equal to 16 to the power of 2. Now 16 here, this is the same thing as 4 to the power of 2. So now if I substitute in 4 to the power of 2 for 16, I get y to the power of y is equal to 4 to the power of 2 to the power of 2. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. So 4 to the power of 2 to the power of 2, that's going to equal 4 to the power of 2 times 2. And 2 times 2 is 4, so I have y to the power of y is equal to 4 to the power of 4. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, and this means that a is equal to b. So in this case, y is equal to 4. Now, however, we aren't done yet, because remember how we set x squared equal to y. So x squared is equal to y, and we know that y is equal to 4. So we have x squared is equal to 4. Now, to solve this, I'm going to take the square root on both sides. So the square root of x squared is equal to square root of 4. So now these two are going to cancel out. I'm left with x is equal to the square root of 4, which is equal to positive or negative 2. So now to check, my original equation was x to the power of x to the power of 2 is equal to 16. So now we know that x is equal to positive or negative 2. So let's first start out with x is equal to positive 2. If x is equal to positive 2, I have 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 16. Now, 2 to the power of 2, that's equal to 4. So I have 2 to the power of 4 is equal to 16. And now, 2 to the power of 4, this is the same thing as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. So it's equal to 16, meaning I have 16 is equal to 16. And this is right, meaning our solution of x is equal to positive 2 is right. So now for x is equal to negative 2, I have negative 2 to the power of negative 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 16. Now negative 2 to the power of 2 is still positive 4, so I have negative 2 to the power of positive 4 is 16, and negative 2 to the power of positive 4 is 16. So I have 16 is equal to 16, and this is right, so both our solutions are right. All right, so I have x to the power of x to the power of 5 is equal to 100. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the power of 5 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of x to the power of 5 to the power of 5 is equal to 100 to the power of 5. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n, right? And m times n, these two are interchangeable. 
meaning this is also equal to a to the power of n times n. And if you can write a to the power of m times n as a to the power of m to the power of n, this means that we can write a to the power of n times m as a to the power of n to the power of m. So in simpler terms, a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. So in this case, I have x to the power of x to the power of 5 to the power of 5. And I can think of x to the power of 5 here as m, and I can think of 5 as n. So if I switch these two places, I get x to the power of 5 to the power of x to the power of 5. Now this is equal to 100 to the power of 5. Now 100 is the same thing as 10 squared. So if I replace 10 squared with 100, I'll get x to the power of 5 to the power of x to the power of 5 is equal to 10 squared to the power of 5. Now I'm going to let x to the power of 5 equal to the variable y. So if I replace y for x to the power of 5, I get y to the power of y is equal to 10 to the power of 2 to the power of 5. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 10 to the power of 2 to the power of 5, that's going to equal 10 to the power of 10, because 2 times 5 is 10. Now if I have something in form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, this means that a is equal to b. So in this case, y is equal to 10. Now, however, we aren't done yet, because remember how we said x to the power of 5 is equal to y. So if x to the power of 5 is equal to y, well, we already have our value of y, which is 10, meaning x to the power of 5 is equal to 10. Now, to solve this, I'm going to take the fifth root on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I'm left with x is equal to the fifth root of 10, or this can also be written as 10 to the power of 1 over 5. But x to the power of x is equal to x to the power of 2. So now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by x to the power of 2. So then these still cancel out, and I'll be left with x to the power of x over x to the power of 2 is equal to 1. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m over a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m minus n. So x to the power of x over x to the power of 2, that's going to equal x to the power of x minus 2, which is equal to 1. Now, if I take the ln on both sides, I get ln x to the power of x minus 2 is equal to ln 1. And now, an important property of logarithms is that if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can actually move this x1 and b to the front of the logarithm. So this is going to equal b times ln a. So in this case, for ln x to the power of x minus 2, I can move x minus 2 to the front. So now I get ln, sorry, I got x minus 2 times ln x is equal to ln 1. Now the value of ln 1 is simply equal to 0. So now I have x minus 2 times ln x is equal to 0. So now this gives me two equations. I have x minus 2 is equal to 0, and I also have ln x is equal to 0. So for x minus 2 equals 0, this is really simple. All I have to do is add 2 on both sides, and I get x is equal to 2. Now for ln x is equal to 0, I'm going to be taking e to the power of both, both sides. So now I have e to the power of ln x is equal to e to the power of 0. So e and ln x, these two are going to cancel out, so I'll be left with x is equal to e to the power of 0, which is 1. So my two values of x are x equals 2 and x is equal to 1. So now to check, 
my original equation was x to the power of x is equal to x to the power of 2. So first off, if x equals 2, I get 2 to the power of 2, which is equal to 2 to the power of 2. I mean, 4 equals 4, so this is right. Now, if x is equal to 1, I get 1 to the power of 1 is equal to 1 to the power of 2. 1 to the power of 1 is 1, and 1 to the power of 2 is also 1. So this is right as well, meaning both our solutions are right.